In previous videos, I installed the knee and the one shot oil pump. Now that those are ready, I can go ahead and install the saddle and the oil lines. And before I forget and end up having to disassemble this whole thing, I go ahead and I put on the rear way wiper cover. Uh, there's no adding it later. The first thing I need to do is go ahead and put on uh, these chip guards before the saddle goes on. I place the saddle on its back um, to make it easier to install the oil uh, metering block and the tubes that feed oil to all of the ways. This little bracket holds one end of the main rubber line that comes from the oil pump. Um, if I don't put it on now, it's a little bit tough to get to the screw. These uh, oil lines are pretty stiff, pretty stout. Um, they are 5 30 seconds of an inch thick, but the wall thickness of the tube has got to be every bit of 95% of that. Trying to stuff these back into the holes in the saddle made me wonder if reusing them was a bad idea. The metering block is held onto the bottom of the saddle with uh, a couple of machine screws, um, but it is also spaced away from the bottom of the saddle with these two little spacers. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, I would really appreciate if you take a second to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell icon and like this video, give it a thumbs up. With the metering block uh, secured in place, um, I'm going to go ahead and use that bracket to mount one end of the um, hose assembly. And before I go ahead and uh, put the saddle onto the knee, I want to go ahead and pre-oil all of the ways. There is a notch in the end of the gib where the gib adjustment screw sits and it um, develops some burrs along the way. So I used a file to get rid of those burrs before seating the gib into the saddleways. I'll likely come back and adjust the gib later once the uh, entire machine is together. I had plugged one end of this four-way junction in the last video so I could 
bleed the oil lines in the knee and make sure nothing was clogged. I need to go ahead and remove that now in order to connect the hose leading to the metering block. Before I go ahead and plug that open port on the end of the metering block, I'm going to go ahead and pump some oil into the system so I know that everything's full of oil up to that point. With the hose and metering block bled, I'll go ahead and pump a little bit more oil into the system and I should have oil coming out of all of the other tubes. Placing these oil lines back into the saddle was a real pain in the rear. I probably spent 45 minutes to an hour trying to get them all back into place. It's at this point I am really, really second guessing, not just replacing them. If I had to do this again, I'd, I'd rethink that for sure. But I'm trying to be frugal and not spend any money on things I really don't need to spend money on. And next is the saddle lock after a little bit of oil. It just slides into this hole on the left side of the saddle and then um, screw in the handle for it. Just as I did with the column way wipers, I go ahead and I soak them in oil. Um, before I go ahead and install them and install the covers. So I'm doing what I can to improve the quality and entertainment value of my videos. So I'd, I'd really appreciate your feedback in the comments. Some have suggested I should put some like soft music, nothing too loud, behind the video as it plays, uh, maybe voluming down when I'm speaking. Um, I'm really interested in your feedback. If you could maybe tell me in the comments, should I should I put music on these things or leave them as is? As I showed on the disassembly, there's a couple of cracks. It's actually one long crack in the feed nut bracket where the longitudinal feed nut retaining screw sits. This is not a critical place for a crack, and it really doesn't affect the strength of the bracket at all. But I still wanted to fix it. It was kind of bugging me. I didn't want to just break the rest of it off and leave that hole there. So I started with the flap disc uh, to clean away any dirt or um, oil residue that might have still been on the surface and then I used a carbide burr and a dremel tool to gouge out the area of the crack. Um, I'm going to braise this back together and I need plenty of surface area to make sure that it actually adheres to the parent material. I am preheating this with MAP gas. Um, it's the yellow bottle. Not so much because it really needs to be um, preheated, but really to burn off still any remaining dirt that might be down in that crack or oil um, that would end up affecting the quality of the braise. 
I've had uh, really good luck with this Blue Demon aluminum bronze uh, brazing wire uh, with my TIG welder. Set the welder at probably about 150, 165 amps and then use the foot pedal to just really get the parent material somewhat red hot. I don't want to melt the feed nut. I just want to kind of get it hot enough that the braze will flow into it. Once I had the crack filled, uh, I would use the mini flap disc again to grind off any of the excess uh, braze material. And then I used a grinding stone on the Dremel to go ahead and smooth out any of the uh, braze on the interior. Totally unnecessary repair, uh, and no one is ever going to see it, but I'll know it's fixed. And now I go ahead and insert it back into the saddle and uh, fasten it down with four socket head cap screws. Putting some oil here on the feed screw for the saddle. I've already lined up the keyways on the split nut and I can go ahead and push it into the bracket. There's already tight quarters, not a lot of space to uh, get this feed nut uh, retaining screw into the bracket. Um, and trying to record it makes it just that much more fun. With the uh, feed nut and screw secured, I can go ahead and install the bearing uh, bracket for the feed screw. Um, that gets held in with four socket head cap screws. And then I can go ahead and uh, slide on the dial and the dial lock. Uh, and then the handle, and then the handle is secured on with a nut. And now with all that buttoned up, I went ahead and ran the saddle all the way to the back and then all the way to the front. Uh, I didn't notice any binding, but I will need to adjust the backlash. And I think that's going to do it for this video. Please make sure you like and comment. It really does help with the YouTube analytics getting this uh, video out there. Thanks for watching.